Book Three. Nineteen thirty. Count Alexander Ilyich Rostov stirred at half past eight to the sound of rain on the eaves. With a half opened eye, he pulled back his covers and climbed from bed. He donned his robe and slipped on his slippers. He took up the tin from the bureau, spooned a spoonful of beans into the apparatus, and began to crank the crank. Even as he turned the little handle round and round, the room remained under the tenuous authority of sleep. As yet unchallenged, somnolence continued to cast its shadow over sights and sensations, over forms and formulations, over what has been said and what must be done, lending each the insubstantiality of its domain. But when the counter opened the small wooden drawer of the grinder, the world and all it contained were transformed by that envy of the alchemists the aroma of freshly ground coffee. In that instant, darkness was separated from light, the waters from the lands, and the heavens from the earth. The trees bore fruit, and the woods rustled with the movement of birds and beasts, and all manner of creeping things. While closer at hand, a patient pigeon scuffed its feet on the flashing. Easing the little drawer from the apparatus, the Count poured its contents into the pot, which he had mindfully primed with water the night before. He lit the burner and shook out the match. As he waited for the coffee to brew, he did thirty squats and thirty stretches and took thirty deep breaths. From the little cupboard in the corner, he took a small pitcher of cream, a pair of English biscuits, and a piece of fruit, today an apple. Then, having poured the coffee, he began to enjoy the morning's sensations to their fullest. The crisp tartness of the apple, the hot bitterness of the coffee, the savoury sweetness of the biscuit with its hint of spoiled butter. So perfect was the combination that upon finishing, the Count was tempted to crank the crank, quarter the apple, dole out the biscuits, and enjoy his breakfast all over again. But time and tide wait for no man. So, having poured the remnants of the coffee from its pot, the Count brushed the biscuit crumbs from his plate onto the window ledge for his feathered friend. Then he emptied the little pitcher of cream into a saucer and turned toward the door with the intention of placing it in the hall. And that was when he saw the envelope on the floor. Someone must have slipped it under his door in the middle of the night. Setting the saucer down for his one-eyed friend, he picked up the envelope and discovered that it had an unusual feel as if something quite different than a letter had been enclosed. On the back, it bore the dark blue moniker of the hotel, while on the front, in place of a name and address, was written the query, Four o'clock? The Count sat on his bed and took the last sip of coffee. Then he tucked the point of his paring knife under the envelope's flap, slit it from corner to corner, and gazed within. Mon Dieu, he said.